So in a recent video that I uploaded to this channel, I walked you guys through the process of setting up Arch Linux on encrypted LVM. Now in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about LVM and why this benefits you as an Arch Linux user. Now, none of the commands I'm going to go over here are specific to Arch Linux, but I feel like LVM has a special benefit to people that are using a rolling distribution and I think it's even more important to take advantage of it. In fact, the main point of this video is the topic of LVM snapshots. And LVM snapshot, what that allows you to do is take a snapshot of your file system and then you could just revert it back, kind of like you could do in a virtual machine. If you've used VirtualBox or VMware or a number of others, you know probably that you can take a snapshot of that instance, test some software, make some changes, and then you could choose to finalize a snapshot. Basically, you like the changes, you wanna keep it. Or you could just roll it back to roll up back the entire system before you actually made those changes in case any of those changes broke your system. I think that's of very special benefit to Arch Linux because if you have a bad update or something breaks, then you can basically roll everything back. And I think that that's a good thing to have in an Arch Linux system because the nature of constant change with Arch, I mean, sometimes you might run into a situation where you have to downgrade or revert a change, you know, it happens. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through LVM snapshots. I'm gonna demonstrate this concept and I'm going to let you know basically how this would fit in with your Arch Linux installation, how you can utilize this and some general tips surrounding that. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here we are on my System76 Lemur laptop the same laptop that I used to record the video that I mentioned where we set this up in the first place. We set up Arch Linux on encrypted LVM. So check that video out if you haven't already done so. And this is actually the same installation of Arch Linux. So I'm basically continuing right where we left off. I don't have a graphical user interface here. I just have the command line, but maybe you've since updated that or installed GNOME, KDE or something like that. But for the purposes of this video, I don't need a desktop environment. A terminal is all I really need. You'll notice that I'm logged in as root right now. Normally I don't recommend running as root, but this is just a test machine. I really don't care if something happens to it. Worst case scenario, I have to reinstall Arch again, so I'm not really too worried about that. So I, I don't normally don't recommend running as root, but if you're not running as root, a lot of these commands are gonna require sudo, so it's just sudo space and then whatever command I give you. I'm not going to do that because I'm logged in as root, so I don't need sudo because root can do everything. Just wanted to give you guys that disclaimer up front. So first of all, we can just get a look at our disk layout by doing df-h. Normally we would use this command to check the free space, and yeah, you see that information here. I mean, you can see, for example, I'm only using 1% of my home directory, which is nothing, and I have 16% space used on my root volume, but the reason why I brought this up and showed this command here is because it just shows the two logical volumes just as a refresher. In that video, we created LV root, which is basically for the distribution or operating system essentially. And then we have LV home, which is mounted in slash home, which is where all our personal files will go. And, and I love this layout. I mean, even without LVM, this is useful because you could basically have a separate home partition for all of your files. Then you could just simply reinstall the distribution and the root volume and never need to touch your home directory. It just adds to, uh, you know, to the convenience there. I'll clear the screen here. And then we created a volume group, and I probably should have showed this first, but VGS will show you the volume groups on your system, and we have the one. We have vol group zero, or whatever you named it. We can see, in my case, it's a 465 gigabyte volume group, or somewhere around there, and we have 185 gigabytes or so free that are not used. Actually, the 185 gigabytes you see there are unallocated. They're not claimed by anything. It's not that you have that much space free to save files. That space just isn't even allocated. I mean, basically, You'll notice if I run df-h again, that my the size of my home partition or my home volume here is 246 gigabytes. This is a 500 gig drive. That doesn't even come close. That's why we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 185 gigabytes free. Now, what can we do with that extra space? So that leads me to the main point here. Unallocated space 
in LVM allows you to create additional logical volumes. Maybe you want to have a, a games par, uh, volume or something and, and have all your games in there. And that's great because we could create that without rebooting the system. We could create a new logical volume. That space is free for us to do with as we wish. So in regards to snapshots, we could use that on allocated space for snapshots. And what that allows us to do is basically roll back the system. We can make some kind of a change. And if that change results in some kind of negativity, maybe it's just not performing well, maybe we broke a piece of software or something, we could basically just roll it back. So what does that mean for Arch? Why is it important? So one thing about Arch Linux I recommend is not to update every single day. Now, most Arch Linux users will tell you not updating constantly defeats the whole purpose for running Arch in the first place. That's completely untrue. The reason why you run Arch is because you could build it any way you want and you have access to the latest software whenever you want it. Just because you have access to the latest software all the time doesn't mean that you need to install it right away. You certainly shouldn't wait too long to update your packages though. I mean, I would say two weeks is probably the longest, definitely not longer than three. You don't wanna wait longer than that, but you don't need to update every day. Now, what I found with Arch in my long history of using it is that sometimes a bad update comes in and maybe it's not a bad update necessarily, but just something breaks and then you have to downgrade something. It happens, it's a rolling distribution. That's just the way it works. So what I find is the best way of using Arch, at least for me, is I'll update once a week. Before I update, I'll take an LVM snapshot and then I'll install all the updates, reboot the machine. If all goes well for several days or maybe even up until the next point that I go to upgrade, I'll finalize that snapshot. I'll make it permanent. Everything works, I'm happy. But if I run into a problem where something breaks, then I restore the LVM snapshot and then I'm back to right where I was when everything was working. And then maybe I might wait a few more days and see if maybe the developers fix something and then I'll run the updates again and try again. LVM gives me that flexibility. I think that's why it's important to have because you have that snapshot to fall back on and you have something to restore to. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but before we do, I just wanted to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. Setting up your Linux cloud servers or Linodes is quick and easy with their intuitive cloud manager interface. There are multiple instance types available to make any app or service flexible and scalable. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Use your Linode server to host a website, set up a VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. You can set up your Linodes in a data center nearest you with their latest opening in Mumbai in July 2019. If you need assistance, 24-7, 365 friendly support is available by phone or support ticket. Visit the URL on the screen right now to get started with $20 in credit you can use towards setting up your very own Linode. There are Linux instance types available for as low as $5 a month. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. So back here at the laptop again on the top or the third line down, you see the 185 gigabytes that we have free. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you some of the benefits of LVM with some hands on here. I'm going to give you some commands. Now, I'm going to start with growing the file system because I did mention that was a um, benefit here and it is something you probably want to know how to do. So as you can see here, I certainly am not in danger of running out of space. 246 gigabytes for home. I have 233 gigabytes available there, so certainly a lot. But let's just go ahead and pretend that I'm starting to run out of space and I wanna go ahead and extend that. How would I do that? So here's what we do. Now, first of all, we're gonna run VGS and we've already run that. We see that we have 185 gigs free here. You know, we just wanna run that just to make sure we actually do have enough space free or at least to know how much available space we do have available to work with. So we got a, a number, we can't go above 185 or so. So we know that. And what I'm going to do now is extend that home volume. And if I run LVS, we could see what we have allocated so far. So actually LV home is allocated to be 250 gigabytes and LV root is 30. So LVS kind of gives you an idea of what we have right now. With that in mind, 
We also want to note the name because we're going to need that information for the next command. So LV home is the one that I'm going to work with. I'm going to enlarge that to about 270 gigabytes. I'm just going to add 20 to it. So what command would we use to extend that? So I'll do LV extend dash capital L. I'm going to do plus two zero G 20 gigabytes dash N. And I'm going to do this against slash dev slash mapper vol group zero. That's the name of our volume group, a dash, and then the name of the actual logical volume itself, which in this case is going to be LV home. So I'm going to add 20 gigabytes to that and I'll press enter. And it says logical volume LV home successfully resized. Awesome. It was that was pretty easy, right? So let's go ahead and check it out. It even says that it extended it to 270 gigabytes. So let's run df dash h again. Wait a minute. It's actually showing that LV home is still around 250 gigs. It says 246. I thought we added 20 gigabytes to it. Well, we did, but we do have to resize the file system in order for the file system to take advantage of the space that we gave it. So to do that, we're going to run the next command, which is resize 2fs slash dev slash mapper fall group zero dash lv underscore home. And what this command is going to do is resize the file system on that volume to take advantage of the space that we just gave it. So I'll press enter. And that actually happened pretty quickly. On the last line, it tells you how many blocks it is now. And it's basically telling you that it was resized. It says online resizing required. Online resizing means that we can resize this volume without unmounting it. So if this was a server, for example, then that means we can enlarge the file system and users won't even notice anything going on. They just all of a sudden have extra space. We don't have to stop an application. We don't have to reboot the machine. We do it online. And that's exactly what we want. We did it online. So now if I run df-h, we can see that it has grown. It's 265 gigs. Well, it's probably, it's, it's estimated. It's actually a little bit more advanced than that. But we can see that we got the extra space. So now we were able to resize that. So I'll clear the screen now. And like I mentioned before, you can shrink a volume as well. I'm not going to show you how to do that. If you want to know the procedure for that, all you have to do is look up a Google search or something and you should find the command. Now I know that's the last thing I want to tell you guys is go Google it, right? I mean, you're watching a video to learn. Um, and the reason why I'm not teaching you guys the command to shrink the file system is because really bad things can happen. Sometimes it works just fine, but honestly, it's just really not a good idea. So I don't recommend that you ever do that. But if you really, really feel like you need to do it, then you could go ahead and search for it. Just make sure you have good backups. LVM is great for enlarging your file systems and growing them. Not as great for shrinking them. Now, some file system types like ext4 and others might handle this better. E or excuse me, XFS handles it very poorly. I've actually never seen XFS work. I know there's ways of getting it done and there's patches and there's newer versions of file systems that allow you to do this. Um, you know, it's more stable. It's just too much to go over and too many variables here. So I would just say, you know, just keep note of the commands to resize and grow your file systems and don't worry too much about shrinking them because it's usually not much of a use case for that anyway. Back here on the laptop itself, let's go ahead and create a snapshot. Now, first of all, we can list current snapshots, LVS. And we've already run this. It just basically shows you the size of each logical volume. So I actually don't have any updates right now. So if I do pacman-syu, this is a very current installation here. So I don't actually have any, any updates. So normally what I would want to do is, is basically take a snapshot, run updates, and then, you know, re restore that. So what I'm going to do instead to kind of simulate that is install a package. But first I want to create the snapshot, then I'll install the package. So again, we have these two logical volumes. And what I want to do is snapshot the root volume because that is the main, uh, you know, file system here, the main volume. 
And this allows me to take a snapshot so I could test whatever package I want. So I'm gonna create the snapshot. So to do that, I'm gonna use the command LV create dash capital L, and I'm gonna make that five gigabytes, so that's GB in caps, so five GB, dash S, because I want it to be a snapshot, and then the name, so dash N, and I need to give it a name, so I'm gonna call it root snapshot 2019, and then 0608, doesn't matter what you call it, that's just my own naming scheme, I give it a name with underscores instead of spaces, and then a date string so I know about when that snapshot was created. So that's the name. And then I need to tell it what logical volume it is I'd like to snapshot. So in this case, dev mapper vol group zero hyphen, and then the logical volume name, which is LV root. I'll press enter. And then it tells me the root snapshot was created. So, okay, we got a snapshot now. How do we view that? Well, that's easy, LVS. We already used that before to, to see the logical volumes we had on the system. If you recall, we had LV home and LV root already, but now here at the bottom, we have root snapshot with the date string uh, shown right there. So why would that be shown there with the logical volumes? Well, because a snapshot is a logical volume. It's a logical volume with an origin. You can see that the origin is LV root. That tells me where the snapshot came from. So that snapshot, was created from the LV root logical volume, and its data percent is 0.01. .01. Now that percent right there, we wanna keep an eye on that because if that gets to 100%, bad things will happen. I'll talk about that more in a moment, but basically we do have this snapshot. So what I'm able to do now is test whatever I want to, or maybe I want to take a snapshot, like I mentioned, before I run updates. That's a great thing to do because like I mentioned already, if you have a bad time with those updates, you could simply restore the snapshot, but I don't have any updates. So what I'm gonna do instead is install a package. Now I don't have Tmux installed right now, which is one of my favorite applications. So I'm going to install that. So pacman dash capital S and then the package name, in this case Tmux, it really doesn't matter which one we choose. Just a quick example, it's a small package and I'll press enter. Enter again. All right, and we now have Tmux installed. Tmux is an awesome terminal multiplexer. I have a whole series of videos that goes over Tmux and why it's awesome, uh, but it definitely is awesome. And we do have that installed right now. So, okay, what if for some reason Tmux broke something? It's unlikely. Tmux doesn't really impact anything else on the system, but we can go ahead and revert the snapshot if we find out that the changes that we've made are not desired. How would we restore the snapshot? So if you recall, we have the root snapshot there at the bottom. That snapshot was taken before I installed Tmux. So to restore the snapshot, I'm going to run LV convert dash dash merge. And then I'm going to type the path to the snapshot, which is going to be dev vol group zero, root, snapshot, then the date string I gave it. So basically I'm telling it, I wanna merge that back. I don't, I don't want this uh, change anymore. Let's just, just restore that. So I'll press enter. And it's telling me that it's going to delay that actually because it's open. And what it's referring to is that the root logical volume is in use. Well, of course it is. That's what Arch Linux itself is installed on. We can't just, um, you know, unmount that. So it's then telling us it's going to make these changes final when we reboot. So I restored the snapshot. I still have Tmux. Well, let's go ahead and reboot it and see if we still have it when it comes back up. All right, so I'm back, rebooted the machine after restoring the snapshot. So if I do which, Tmux, you can see that I don't actually have Tmux, which makes sense because we did restore that snapshot and that change was activated when I reboot the machine. Now I did run into an issue once where it wouldn't actually uh, reboot properly. It just needed to be shut down and 
come back on. I mean, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. But if you see that, that just means you need to power out the machine and restart it. But anyway, we see that we have no Tmux here, which means we were able to restore the snapshot. So that's all well and good. So, but what if we wanted to keep the snapshot? What if we enjoyed the changes? We liked the changes and we wanted to keep that. How would we finalize a snapshot so that way we could make everything final that we have, have done on the system? So how would we do that? Well, let's go ahead and create a new snapshot. So if I run LVS, you see I don't have any snapshots right now. And then I'm going to simply recall the command that we used to create it. And here's the command that we used to create that original snapshot. So I'm just going to, going to basically run through this one more time. So I created the snapshot. And you can see that it is here. And then I'm going to install that package again, just as an example. And we now have Tmux. And we do have a snapshot taken before I install Tmux. So let's just assume we've had some time to test this. Everything is totally fine. And we like this. We want to keep it. We don't want to restore it ever. We want to actually finalize it. How would we do that? Well, here's the command we would use to finalize that. And it's simply LV remove. We want to remove the logical volume. And the logical volume we want to remove is this one. So I'll go ahead and remove it. It's asking me if I really want to remove that. I do. And I'll go ahead and get rid of that. And it says it's, it's removed. And if I run LVS, we see that it is in fact gone. We still have Tmux. So basically the takeaway there is to finalize a snapshot, delete it. And then once you delete it, then it's final. If you want to restore it, and that's when you run the LV convert dash dash merge command that we ran earlier. So earlier in the video, I mentioned the data percent. I said, don't let that get to 100%. If you basically create a snapshot and then it fills up the unallocated space, you'll start to lose data. That's one of the downsides to LVM. You never want to keep the snapshots around any longer than you have to. And that should never be a problem because with the root file system, other than updates, you're really not changing anything because your data is in slash home. So you're not going to fill it up. As long as you have more than you know a few gigabytes or something, you should be totally fine. You just basically create your snapshot, just run your tests, maybe spend some time just checking out everything. And then once you decide that everything is running the way it should, then just delete the snapshot, make it final. Or if you run into a problem, you restore the snapshot and then you're good to go. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. I, this is the reason why I recommend LVM on pretty much every Linux distribution. I know it's not talked about a whole lot, but especially with Arch being a rolling release and all the constant change, like I mentioned, it's just a good idea. You just have that fallback point. As long as you don't let those snapshots go out of control and don't leave them hanging forever and forget they're there, you'll, I think you'll find that this is a, an awesome system to employ. Just basically snapshot before you run your updates, then run your updates, test them out, Everything runs fine, great, remove it. If not, restore it. I think this will give you a little peace of mind to have something to fall back on, uh, basically when you're testing software updates and things like that. So what do you guys think of LVM? Is this something you've already been using, something you're, you even heard of? Um, you know, be, be honest. I think a lot of times um, only the, the geekiest among us really read about LVM and pretty much normal people just don't even really bother. It's just one of those things that, haven't caught on as much as I wish it would have, but I think it's a powerful technology. So let me know your thoughts in the uh, comments section below, guys. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I will have new tutorials coming very soon, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.